All right, class, welcome. This is the collapsible chair project. To start, you're going to need to get a nice piece of material that is the appropriate length and width to fit all four of your pieces that create the back of the chair and the seat of the chair. This does not include the slats. You'll see here, it's approximately 30 inches long, seven and three quarters wide. Should get you what you need. First thing you're going to do after that, get started on the bandsaw. Here you're going to set it to one and three quarters, and at that stage, lock down the fence and start to cut your material. Sometimes you might need to adjust those blocks to get you going. There you go, all four pieces. All right, as you can tell, all of these are still pretty rough. All right, so we're gonna run these through the planer and get them all to the exact same dimension. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is plane these to width. That will allow for you to draw your template on there. Notice I'm checking the template and seeing if it's the right width first, and then after you do the width, you can get them to thickness. We wanna go for about one and a quarter. After you're done with that, you can go ahead and mark them off so that you can go to the bandsaw and cut. All right, folks, once you got those rough lengths created and you've planed them to size, which this should match the template, and this thickness, we're going for about one and a quarter. You might have seen on mine, I had this spot that's just barely gone now. I'll sand the rest. I just wanted to go a little further, so mine are more like one and three sixteenths, but uh, it should be just fine. So you'll have those plane down in both directions. Everything should be equal. You have traced your templates, and now it's time to go to get your rough cuts on the bandsaw. Make sure when you do the bandsaw, you raise the guard just enough for your piece to get under, but not too much to where your finger will get cut off if you slip. Remember as you're cutting to always leave the line and so that you can sand to the line afterwards. Notice I'm taking multiple cuts at it, don't try and do it all in one fell swoop. That blade will not bend all the way around some of those. All right, there you see it. Here we have our rough cuts now. Um, oh, I actually forgot to do that one, so I'll be going back. What can we do? Else too much. Notice there's still pencil line everywhere. We'll just sand down to that. All right, that's our next step. All right, folks, we're going to show you how to utilize the edge sander, twist this a little bit, to take care of these issues right here, right? So we still have a line to get to. Now the trick of this is you always want to have the direction of the sandpaper going on the edge grain if possible. That means that this, this move right here is safe. But if you were to go like this and stick it in like here, that is not as safe and it can rip the sandpaper very easily. So that's very critical. Remember that you always have the sandpaper pulling against the edge grain, not going into the end grain, otherwise you can wreck the sandpaper. You might hear it already, but the vacuum is on. You need to pull up on this here to get the suction, okay? <laughs> and then you can begin. I want you to watch how I do it. I'm going to do it slow first and then I'm going to go faster. Okay, as you can see, this side is pretty good. This side still needs some sanding, but that's gonna require us to flip it over so that we have that correct direction. So, what we're gonna do, instead of flipping it over right away, I'm gonna do the other side. So we did this side, we're gonna 
flip it over to the other side here, and then we'll flip the whole thing over and retrace our template on here so we can do the opposite end. All right, here we go. I hope you noticed while I was doing these things that the <clears throat> rotation happened. I would slowly rotate as it went so that it was even. If you're just trying to do little sections and then move it, it's going to turn more hex hexagonal or pentagonal, but this makes it nice and smooth. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this back down, line it up with the smooth side over here, smooth side over here, and just draw a nice line. And you see there's not much to take off. Then we'll flip it over. Same thing over here, we have our smooth side. Line it up. And again, not much to pick up. So this is what we're gonna do for all four of our pieces. We're gonna get them nice and smooth, round it over, try and make them as equal as possible. Here we go. As you are working with these pieces, you will want to, once in a while, stop and put one on top of the other the one that you've finished on top of the one that you haven't to check and see if they look the same. Here you see me tracing, getting a line in order that I can go right to that line and make them more equal. Now for the sections that have the flat area, uh, I would recommend that yes you want to hold it there but kind of put different pressure, just kind of push a little and then release pressure, push a little and then release pressure so that the sandpaper does not get gunked up too quickly. All right, folks, <clears throat> now we're going to start working on the seat slats and the back slats. And we are going to use some of the same material. And since the seat slats and back slats are both 14 inches, I'm going to double that and add an inch so that I can get enough out of what I have here. So that'll be 29. I'll make a mark there. If you guys want to, you can hit the button on the back to get the laser on and I've got it clamped down over on this side you can see the clamp here <clears throat> I'm gonna have two hands on the top of the machine Let's give you a better view of that two hands on the top of the machine slowly working my way through measures 29 inches length. Now what we're going to do is start cutting the rough width on all the seat slats. Okay. In case you didn't get that on your cut list already, seat slats, we're going to go to about one and three quarter, maybe a little bigger. So we're going to mill it, we're going to start at one and seven eighths. Okay. Then we'll cut it on the bandsaw. After we're done with the bandsaw, we will plane it, and then Mr. Coop will rip these in half for you so that they're going to be a thinner profile, but same style wood. All right, let's go to the bandsaw. All right, there you see I've cut my first one. As many of you guys are working in partners, I will probably give you enough wood for each of you to get uh, all of your pieces. Two and a half of these will get enough for each person. So if you do five, that'll be enough for both of you. But here I now have my five pieces. We're gonna take them to the planer and clean up all these bandsaw marks and get it down to exactly one and three quarter. Then after you do that, you can take it to Mr. Coop and he'll rip these in half for you. Okay, they're all looking nice and smooth. 
They're all one and three quarters inch, sorry, not thick, but wide. Leave the thickness as it is. Mr. Coop will rip it down for you. Then I want you to set the table saw to a little over half of an inch. So we'll go half inch is the tall middle one. Now this measurement tape actually reads 30 seconds. So be careful not to just count over and uh, think that the quarter inch is a half inch. Because even though that's the eighth mark, it is actually only one quarter of an inch because this one measures 30 seconds. So get us right before the half inch mark. Let's go 9 16 So find the half inch mark, go over two, that's your 9 16 mark, all right? Set it to there, lock it down, and then tell Mr. Coop, my material's ready to rip. I want to tell you one more thing, actually, before we get going. When you set it to 9 16 over here, then I want you to also make sure that we raise the blade, which is this crank down here, underneath, that raises the blade, or lowers it. And you want to make it so the teeth just exceed the height of your material. We need to take it to the planer and make it all equal, okay, because they're not exactly the same. I would start with the thick ones because there's one that's going to be a little thicker than the other. Mill those down until they're equal to the other ones and then take off another sixteenth until we're at half inch. Um, this doesn't have to be exactly half inch, but as long as they're all equal and a little under nine sixteenths, we're good to go. So I've gone ahead and done that. That's what you'll need to do on the planer. And then after that, bring them here. So now with your pieces all the same, we're gonna set our stop to 14 inches on the money, exact. You're gonna press your first piece against there. And lower your clamp. Okay, and tighten it down. It should be snug. The other thing I want you to do while you're cutting this particular stock is actually to make sure the saw is pressed all the way back and tighten this knob here. What that does is it locks it so it doesn't move, travel forward to backward. Then all you have to do is have your hands up here and do this move right here. next thing we got to do is put some sort of detail on the pieces that we've created. Now you may use the router table and create a chamfer which is more of an angled bevel right to your piece. This one here is more of a roundover and I'm going to go ahead and do the roundover for you and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the end grain of each of my pieces and then I'm going to go ahead and do the edge grain as well. I'm going to run it through on all of them the seat slots, the back slots, and the ledgers, and get them all done. So here is that process. All right, class, now you've got your two seat supports, which we're gonna set aside, two back supports, which we're gonna use for this glue up, and a number of your seat slots, of which we'll use four up here, and one here. Um, <clears throat> so there will also be one that goes on the opposite side of the legs once we're done with this part of the glue up. Now, uh, what you're going to do to make sure that this glue up goes really well is to use this template and to line up all of these as best you can with each other. Now, some of these are tighter fits than others, but overall it's going to give you about the right separation. And one way to 
kind of make sure it's all in line is to just touch it like that. These are all right in line with each other. And then this one, right in line there. Okay. These are all now in the right spots. You want to make sure that if you put a detail on your edge, that the details go down so that we glue to the flat surface. Okay, so all my details are down. Now, I'm going to set these on here. And ultimately, these are supposed to be about flush with the ends here. Okay. And that is how it will be after we glue it up. So if you wanted to, you could take a pencil right now and make a mark so that you knew where the glue should not exceed. But that mark will be a little bit difficult to sand if you did it right where it will land. So another option is to scoot it a little more towards the outside. So this is overhanging a little bit. And then make your line. Same with this one. Pull it towards you just a bit. Make your line. Okay, so now you see I have little marks here. I'll set that aside. Set that aside. We've got the spot where we don't want our glue to exceed. So you don't want to have the glue really come out either there, 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 or there. Otherwise, it means more cleanup or it'll be visible. So we're going to try and keep our glue spots right where they will connect but not exceed. Now you've got all your material together. Go ahead and put some boards underneath that will give you space to put your clamps under and grab the plywood without it having to interfere with the table. Then I get my clamps together, make sure you choose good clamps and have them ready to go for when you do your glue up. After you get all the glue spread, go ahead and make sure that you set all your pieces in line with one another. You can use a board like this and make sure they're equal and flush to the plywood. Okay. Then you can set the first of your back supports on and make sure it gets as flush as you possibly can get it, both to the sides and to the ends. So you want to check both that all the sides are flush and then also that the ends are flush with the plywood. Now you'll be able to notice as you're gluing that it is very important that all the pieces are the same thickness. So you run them through the planer at the same time, they're the same thickness, because otherwise the glue will only attach well to those that are the tallest in nature. There we are, there's our glue up. And we'll wait for that one to cure so that we know how far apart we should put these to make sure it inserts into there. 